tell me, I mean, see, at one level you have unemployment levels of 2.2% in your uh, workforce and you already have a shortage out there. Now, what objective are you really achieving? Because end of the day seems to me that you're only accentuating the problem, not really solving the problem. At least as far as the H-1B is concerned. Right. You know, there's lots of different ways to look at it. The, the, the fundamental view is that if you view it from the perspective of long-term competitiveness of a country, mm -hmm. human capital development is a very critical aspect of it. The United States, while it's not producing as many computer science graduates, has significant number of college graduates that are coming out of the colleges mm -hmm. that are not getting the right kinds of jobs. There's huge social unrest. Middle class jobs are vanishing. Mm -hmm. There's pressures in the local economies being built around meaningful jobs in the US. Now, we as a country will not do very well if we don't take care of this issue. And we have to invest in our local workforce. There's one of two ways to address the issue of shortage. You can bring in more foreign workers, right. or you can start to invest in your own workers. Uh, they may not necessarily have all the skills, but if you start investing in hiring, training them and developing them, we believe this problem can be solved locally. There is enough supply, there's enough folks that can do IT work, for example, that can do traditional software development types of activities. Um, we're not talking about PhDs in computer science. We're not talking about the highest specialist resources. This program is set up in a way that the numbers of visas is going to increase. It is going to continue to allow the country to bring in, in fact, more people than we currently bring in. The question is really one of, for what purpose? Are we bringing them in to develop the highly specialized skills in the country? You know, it won't bring on uh, folks that are going to assist the innovation economy mm -hmm. or are we going to bring folks that are going to do what you might call not the highly specialized work in IT and um, in that area the debate is you hire and train internally or you go outside the country and bring people in and it is our belief that the supply exists it's uh, you know while the top line numbers in unemployment for these categories seem to be low there's huge numbers of underemployed folks in the country that would use do these jobs. Yeah, but the fact still remains is that even if now that you're going to increase the quota, and which in some form or the other is actually going to increase the incidence of offshoring, because now the, there'll be since you can't bring in people, you'll tend to try and move as many jobs as you can to uh, offshore locations. So how does it really solve the problem? You know, offshoring and globalization is here to say. Now this bill is not addressing or is not intending to address. Offshoring. It is intending to address the policies for high skilled immigration into the United States. So, at some fundamental level, it is a bill that's saying we want to continue to invest in the innovation economy. We want to invest in the American workers, and to the extent that we believe there's a supply of resources that can be hired and trained locally, we'll continue to do so. And to the extent, you know, the, the fact that offshoring will happen and uh, optimization of capital and labor will happen globally, that will continue to go on. This is not going to stem offshoring. Yet. Uh, and to the extent, you know, the, the, the argument that maybe offshoring will increase based on this, I really don't believe so because the fact is it's already optimized because the incentives already exist for all the enterprises to, to globally distribute their workforce. But if, then if, if you are really looking at protecting the American workforce, uh, there is a significantly larger f in flight of jobs that has happened in the manufacturing sector. Mm. Now, why would you not look at that first and look at the significantly lower numbers here than going and... Uh, because you've lost jobs, you've lost industries. Your uh, Macs are being produced in China. Why don't you look at that first? Why, why are you looking at this problem? So, you're suggesting we should... Um not address this in the technology industry. In terms of priority, in terms of priority, See, I mean, listen, we have to address this at multiple levels. Uh, the, the the question here is, the country probably needs um, an industrial policy that addresses uh, considerations around manufacturing. I'm not an expert to, to talk about it. Um, I think the, the the core issue at play here is, do we believe that the U.S. has the necessary resources and the ability to hire train those folks here in the U.S. to address the needs? of the enterprise. And we believe we do. And we don't need to necessarily bring in foreign workers for these skills. 
And so, um, you know, any large country, and this is was very well articulated by Brad Smith in a recent cemetery, any large country is generally not going to take very kind to organizations or outsourcing companies coming into their uh, country and not investing in the local workforce. And today, there is a fundamental challenge that I believe the Indian industry has where they have not invested appropriately in the local workforce. And um, the writing's been on the wall for a long time. Uh, and if this bill passes, it has serious implications for their industry. Um, and it's something that they ought to start addressing.